Former Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte's so-called war on drugs killed thousands. The government says a little over 6,000 people were killed in legitimate anti-drug operations. Rights groups, however, dispute both claims, that of legitimacy and the number of those killed. It prompted the International Criminal Court to open an investigation into the drugs war. But some concerned Filipinos are already carrying out their own investigations. And their findings are troubling. Each of these skeletons has a story to tell. The story of a war on drugs the Philippine government fought over the past six years. Officially, some 6,200 people were killed by police for dealing with drugs. The true toll is nearly certainly much bigger. And the x-ray showed two, two bullets mm -hmm. with the remains, okay? And I, I'm just so happy that it was, they were not lost. They were not lost. So two bullets came with that. I Examining the remains of some of the people who died, forensic pathologist Raquel Fortun made a shocking discovery. In seven cases out of 47, the death certificates were false. They listed a natural cause of death when people had actually been shot. The Philippines' procedures for investigating death, says the 60-year-old, have always been flawed. But here comes Duterte as president in 2016, and he simply took advantage of it. It's been happening before, but in 2016, the killings actually escalated. And right now, it's not safe to actually walk around because somebody can just shoot you. And the police are not doing anything because they don't know how, they can, or they won't. And some of the killings actually are perpetrated by, you know, they're the perps. Yeah. They did it. They did it. Many families in the Philippines have experienced this kind of scenario. Hitmen approaching at night to shoot a loved one. Then evidence of drug abuse is planted, says Grace. She lost her father and brother six years ago. The mother of three now hopes that Dr. Fortune will shed more light on what actually happened. When, my, when the civilian is shutting, give uh, my father one shot again to sure she's de he's dead. Uh, the, the civilian planted my father a uh, gun, uh, two pieces of drug sachet, and money. That's why if you have a gun, is fight back. That's the reason the, my father killed, because it's fight, fight back. The poor were the primary victims of the war on drugs. The International Criminal Court estimates that up to 30,000 people, more than four times the official number, were killed on former President Duterte's watch. Many relatives now want to set the record straight. This Catholic priest is doing his part to support them. Referent Flaviano Villanueva pays for the exhumations and for legal advice. He fears that the killings, even with Duterte gone, are far from over. In the past two weeks, we have counted at least eight or nine killings to this very present day. My point, there's no difference between back then and today. To make matters worse, I believe that the culture of killing has not only been ingrained, but it has also become, sadly, an organized enterprise. So the war on drugs is a complete failure. If it has one success, it left families broken, widowed, and orphaned. The drugs continue. The drugs are cheaper these days. Dr. Fortune is convinced that the true toll of the war on drugs will never come to light. Too many of those who lost their lives remain unidentified and unclaimed. But she hopes that her discoveries will bring a semblance of justice to the families who remain behind. 
Joining me now for more is journalist Anna Santos, who has covered former President Rodrigo Duterte's war on drugs. Anna, welcome. We have a situation here where you have authorities who have essentially falsified evidence to potentially hide guilt. Can people realistically expect justice when it's the authorities themselves who are involved? Biresh, right now, I think that justice is going to be very difficult. And we talk about justice, you know, in the sense of accountability and bringing those people responsible to account. That's going to be really difficult right now. Number one, we have President Marcos Jr. and Duterte's daughter, Sara Duterte, as vice president. They're seen very much as continuity candidates and continuity legislators. So we see them as continuing the policies of the Duterte administration, including the war on drugs. Second to that, there have been pronouncements by the Philippine National Police and also the law enforcement authorities saying that they're very happy with how the war on drugs was carried out under the Duterte administration. And they have asked President Marcos Jr. to in carry out the same policy and even intensify it. So it's going to be a very difficult environment for justice because we see a lot of impunity still happening under this government. Just help us understand why it is so easy to be able to falsify a death in the Philippines. You have to remember that the war on drugs was really categorically targeting a lot of the poor young men. All right, they live in, in shanty communities. And in these communities, they would be gunned down in their homes, for example, by masked vigilantes, or sometimes they would go missing. You know, we've spoken to relatives who would hunt for, for, their, for their loved ones for a whole evening and finally find them in some morgue. Now, their bodies would not be released to them if they didn't sign off on a medical certificate that just said another cause of death, like a natural um, disease, like a pneumonia or something like this. So that was the predicament that these families faced. Now, what would you do? If you had, like, you wanted to claim the body of your loved one, you were scared, you didn't have money to pay for a proper autopsy, that's, that's, wouldn't you just sign off on this paper just to be able to grieve onwards? What has it been like for the relatives of these people who have been killed? I mean, I know you've met many of them, as you just demonstrated. What has it been like for them to lose a member of their family? Indescribable, I think, would be the best way to, to say that. There's no words for how they were just um, lose their loved ones. We have met mothers who have lost two, three sons to the drug war. And can you just imagine what that would feel like for someone to just have your sons gone down like that, like they meant nothing? So I think now, more than justice, yes, we will continue to fight for that, and human rights advocates and the families of the grieving have said that they will continue to advocate and fight for justice. But in the meantime, what they want now is the right to grieve, the right for their loved ones to be remembered, and in so remembering, none of us will forget the extrajudicial killings and gross human rights violations under the Duterte administration and which may carry out through the Marcos Duterte administration now. Anna Santos, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for coming into the studio. Thank you, Baresh.